Hey there, rideshare drivers. Today we're going to explore a topic that is essential for all of you out there hustling in the rideshare industry and your income taxes. In fact, did you know that because you're a rideshare driver, you probably qualify to claim more tax deductions, which means you could get a bigger tax refund or owe less monies to the IRS. I'm Mark Stieber, Chief Tax Information Officer at Jackson Hewitt. There's nothing better than being your own boss, but there are some things you need to consider when it comes to filing your income taxes this year. I'll bet you're wondering, what tax deductions are there for Uber drivers? Do you have to pay taxes on lift tips? What is the Uber mileage deduction? What tax forms are provided to drivers? I'm here to answer those questions and many more for you. So let's get started. As a driver, are you an employee or are you self-employed? When you're a rideshare driver, you work for yourself. You're not an employee of Uber, Lyft, Juno, DoorDash, Grubhub, Postmates, or any other rideshare company. Rather, you're self-employed, a self-employed independent contractor that simply does work for these other companies. And that's an important distinction when you're filing your taxes. That's why you might get a Form 1099-K in the mail for money you bring in this way, not a W-2. Even if you only do this part-time and have a full-time job in addition to driving. In addition, if you drive frequently for a rideshare or food delivery platform and expect to owe more than $1,000 in your taxes, you also need to consider filing quarterly estimated income taxes and pay the IRS taxes that you owe throughout the year. When you work for someone else, your taxes get paid through withholding. So when you work for yourself, the IRS is not going to automatically get the money, which is why you might consider filing quarterly estimates. But we'll get into that soon. And there's good news. As an independent contractor, you can take many tax deductions that you don't get as a W-2 employee. Keep watching. You don't want to miss this video. Do you know what expenses you can deduct as an Uber driver? probably more than you think. You can deduct direct business-related expenses like gas and vehicle insurance, but you can also deduct maintenance and repair expenses, vehicle registration, oil changes, tires, and much more. You can lower the taxes you owe by keeping diligent records and tracking your expenses in order to have rideshare-related tax deductions. What are some other tax write-off expenses? Well, drivers can deduct expenses on refreshments and other goods if you offer them to your riders, like water, snacks, and phone chargers. You can also write off and deduct items to keep your vehicle clean and safe for riders, like first aid kits, roadside assistance plans, jumper cables, and more. Anything that you buy for your contract work, you should consider as rideshare tax write-offs. So how do you keep good records? You need to track all income and your rideshare driving activity, and you also need to track all the expenses that you have as a part of your job. Your mileage driven, gasoline expense, maintenance on your vehicle, depreciation of your vehicle, any information on lease payments, vehicle insurance, car washes, towing, tolls and fees, phone and internet bills, and much more. It's critical to track all these expenses and more and keep your receipts and documentation so you can claim all the deductions you deserve. You need to have detailed records to back up your claims to avoid risk and penalties and interest from the IRS should you be looked at. It can seem like a lot, but tax experts are here to help you get and stay organized all year round. Here are a couple of tips to make record keeping quick and simpler for you. Number one, Track your mileage and other expenses as you go along. Make it a daily habit. It's incredibly hard to piece together all your expenses and recreate records later. Every receipt you lose or misplace could be costing you money on your taxes. And Uber and Lyft won't do it all for you. Just because they have records of the passengers you picked up doesn't mean they also keep track of other things, like mileage to the DMV and maintenance shop. Number two, use apps or software to lighten your load. Instead of stuffing receipts in your wallet or pocket or purse, you can download one of the many apps that will let you take pictures or scan your receipts and easily categorize them and save them up to the cloud. Also, you can use a mileage app to keep a real-time mileage accounting for you. And number three, 
track your income and ride sharing and food delivery activity. The responsibility to properly report your income and tips is on you, not your rideshare partner. Even if you do not get a 1099-K form or other document, but you know you earned money from ride sharing, you must still report it or risk issues with the IRS. In many cases, you will get a 1099-K form, but you'll need to reconcile it and make sure it's accurate. It's your responsibility and it is mandatory that you keep track for yourself and list all income on your taxes, 1099-K form or not. What are the two ways you can calculate the mileage deduction? One option is to claim the standard mileage deduction. This deduction is calculated by multiplying the total business miles you drove by a standard rate. You can count every mile you drove while ride sharing, including the mileage driven to a spot to wait for your next customer and every other business mile you travel, like the miles you drove to the DMV or getting your oil changed. The rates for the standard mileage deduction change each year, but luckily there are a lot of helpful calculators on the web so you won't have to do it by hand. While this is the easiest option, the drawback to taking the standard mileage rate deduction is that you cannot deduct any of the other costs associated with your car, like those I mentioned before, including gas, maintenance, depreciation, etc., because those expenses are included in that mileage rate. The second option can take more work on your end, but it can have a bigger benefit. It's the actual car business expense deduction. This option can be more complex, and you'll need to keep more detailed records of every expense associated with your vehicle and ride-sharing job. But basically, an actual business expense deduction method, you take the business portion of the total car expenses you incurred during the year and deduct that in total. In summary, one option is the standard rate by business miles you drove, and the other is every mile used for either method, standard mileage rate or actual expenses, you must track the total miles for the year and the business-related miles that you incurred. As always, I highly recommend you work with a professional to ensure you're capturing everything correctly and getting the biggest deduction you deserve. So what is rideshare income? Well, as a rideshare driver, the way you earn income is different from each company. Either way, your income is broken down into two parts, gross income and net income. Gross income is the total amount you earn and net income is your actual profit after expenses and deductions are taken out, and that's what you pay taxes on. Your gross income varies for each rideshare company. Some buy mileage, others buy trips. Oh, and you might ask, are those Uber tips taxable? Yes, tips you receive from the rider are always taxable. All of this money is taxable income and should be reported to the IRS. The best thing to do is talk with a tax professional to figure out what you need to report and so you don't overreport to the IRS and pay more than you need to. When do you owe the IRS taxes? Taxes are basically due on tax day. This year, April 15th, if you cannot make the final deadline, you can file an extension until October 15th. But to be clear, filing an extension means you have more time to file your paperwork and file your tax return. It does not mean you have more time to pay any taxes owed or a balance due. As a self-employed taxpayer, you also may need to pay quarterly estimated payments. You have four due dates to pay in taxes on the money you earn during that quarter. If you don't pay enough tax by the quarterly deadline, you may be charged a penalty, even if you have a refund at the end of the year. How can rideshare drivers file their taxes? Well, there's basically two ways you can file your taxes on your own, or with the help of a trained, experienced tax professional. We have tax pros across the country that are experts in federal, state, and local tax laws, so you don't have to go it alone if you feel overwhelmed, and they will help you file your tax returns. Okay, rideshare drivers, we've covered the most important things you need to know from self-employment taxes to critical deductions. You're ready to get out there and drive. And tell me in the comments, what was your most interesting conversation you've had recently with a passenger? If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up or two thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more valuable information and hit that notification bell to stay updated on all things taxes. Thank you again for tuning in and remember, understanding rideshare taxes is the key to financial freedom. Schedule an appointment at jacksonhewitt.com to meet with a tax pro today.